Welcome back everyone to my channel Chemistry Made Simple for Need. I am Dr. Radha Subramaniam with a PhD in Chemistry. So today we are going to have a wonderful session about the states of matter. So I uh, have divided this lesson into parts and today we will be doing the first part. So before we start with the session today, I would like to say some important questions which we all often think in your mind that how much time do you need to devote to practice the questions for need ok so when to schedule practice after each topic after chapters or once in a week how many mock exams to attempt when to attempt previous year need papers you will be having all these questions in your mind so we will just briefly see the answers to these questions a brief revision of topics followed by problems on that topic should be done as per a predetermined practice plan covering all topics. And questions should ideally be solved in a sitting of 3 hours so that you get used to focusing your mind for 3 hours at a stretch. You should aim to solve at least one previous year paper every day. I would recommend taking it during the same time of the day as the actual NEET exam. Your body clock has to be adjusted to perform during this period. So with that I will be moving on to the session for today, states of matter. So this is very easy chapter and we will be briefly going through the important concepts of this lesson. Okay, Now first we will start with uh, intermolecular forces. So what are intermolecular forces? These are forces of attraction and repulsion between interacting particles. So the forces can be either attraction or repulsion. Okay, so attractive forces are known as von der Waals forces and a very few elements can participate in hydrogen bond formation. So we can divide intermolecular forces into again three parts. First is dispersion or Landon forces, second is dipole dipole forces and third is dipole induced dipole forces. So these are the three classifications of intermolecular forces. Okay, now what are dispersion forces or Landon forces? What are the characteristics of dispersion forces? So here London forces or dispersion forces these are shown by non-polar molecules because of the temporarily correlated movements of electrons in interacting molecules. So because this is a temporary force and these forces will be always attractive and the interaction energy will be inversely proportional to the sixth power of the distance between the two interacting particles. So remember that interaction energy is inversely proportional to the sixth power of the distance between the interacting particles and these forces are important at only very short distances ok then their magnitude will depend on the polarizability of the particles so these are the important characteristics it's very easy uh, explained in a, in a very simple language so that you can easily remember these characteristics ok now next what are dipole dipole forces so these are the forces acting between the molecules which has permanent dipole. So ends of the dipoles will possess partial charges only. Then partial charges will be less than the unit electronic charge. And here the interaction is stronger than London force but it is weaker than ion ion interaction because partial charges are involved. Okay, then the attractive force will decrease when the distance between the dipoles increases. Okay, then interaction energy between the stationary polar stationary means immobile not moving polar molecules is proportional to 1 by 3 r cube ok then interaction energy between rotating polar molecules is double of stationary polar molecules where r is the distance between the polar molecules so remember this and uh, next we will see what is dipole induced dipole forces what are the characteristics so here these types of attractive forces they normally are seen between polar molecules which has permanent dipole and the molecules lacking permanent dipole here. The interaction energy will be inversely proportional to the sixth power of the distance okay, between the two interacting particles. Then induced dipole moment always depends on the dipole moment which is present in the permanent dipole and the polarizability of the electrically neutral molecule. Then molecules of large size can be easily polarized. High polarizability will increase the strength of attractive interactions. So remember these points for the important characteristics of dipole induced dipole forces. Okay. Now thermal energy. What is thermal energy? It is the energy of the body uh, arising from 
the movement of atoms or molecules. So you see when atoms or molecules move it acquires kinetic energy and uh, as a result thermal energy will arise due to the motion and directly proportional to the temperature of the substance and what is the measure of the average ki kinetic energy of the particles of matter it uh, this thermal energy and this is so because of that responsible for the particle movement. So, thermal energy is the measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles of matter that is why it is responsible for the movement of particles and the movement of particles is called thermal motion and intermolecular forces keeps the molecules together but thermal energy will keep try to keep them apart see the difference intermolecular will attract the molecules together but thermal energy will keep them apart the three states of matter are result of balance between the intermolecular and thermal energy of the molecules ok so here we saw about thermal energy now what are the gas laws for gas laws you have got to study like all all I think already you would have all studied this and very familiar with Boyle's law, Charles law, Gay-Lussac's law, then Avogadro's law we are also have got to learn Dalton's law, partial pressure so what are these laws Boyle's law what is Boyle's law is very important you, are, you might have learned this in physics as well so when the temperature is kept constant pressure of a fixed amount of gas will vary inversely with its volume so we take pressure along the x axis and volume along the y axis so pressure is inversely proportional to volume or pressure is equal to constant k1 into 1 by v we rearrange it and write this equation like pv is equal to k1 now we know that p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 so we can write like p2 uh, by uh, p1 by p1 bring this v2 here p1 by v2 is equal to p2 by v1 so it is wrong uh, p2 here where is p2 p2 so bring this v1 over here and here we already have p1 so p1 by v2 is equal to p2 by p1 by v1 is equal to p2 by v2 ok next equation like uh, see you can also write vt by v1 is equal to t t by t0 so write uh, this equation like v2 instead of vt write v2 by v1 is equal to instead of t t write t2 by t1 so from this equation what we can do write uh, rearrange and write like v1 by t1 is equal to v2 by t2 or v by t is a constant which is k2 so we can write like v is equal to k2 into t so the value of k2 is determined by the pressure of the gas the amount and the units in which volume is expressed so we saw what is meant by Boyle's law it states that at uh, constant temperature the pressure of a fixed amount of gas is inversely proportional as its volume or PV is equal to K1 here what did we see here V by T is a constant K2 so uh, this is the mathematical representation of Charles law which states that the pressure remaining constant volume of a fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature so we take the temperature along the x axis and volume along the y axis you can see the different pressures over here for each uh, corresponding temperature now you can see the p1 less than p2 less than p3 p4 like that each line in the volume temperature graph isobar the lowest temperature at which all gases are supposed to have zero volume it is known as absolute zero remember this point now Gay-Lussac's pressure temperature relationship according to gay lussac at constant volume pressure of a fixed amount of gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature or p proportional to t p by t is a constant k3 so we can uh, derive this relationship uh, from both Boyle's law and charles law and each uh, line in this graph is known as isocore ok and you can refer to the diagrams in the textbook as well now we have got avogadro's law of gaseous volume what does it say it says that equal volumes of all gases under same condition of temperature and pressure you have to memorize all these law and remember please you all of you have to use key those who are going to do board exam for descriptive answers and all always try to use the key words for the definitions ok so uh, at, uh, it states that equal volumes of all gases under the same temperature and pressure conditions have equal number of molecules so we can say that the volume of the gas depends directly to the number of molecules in it that is V proportional to N N is the number of molecules or V is equal to K4N always remember the value for the Avogadro or we call it Avogadro constant or number as 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 molecules ok now, now how to calculate the number of moles in a gas we use a simple formula for that small n is equal to M by capital M 
m is the mass of the gas under investigation and m is the molar mass so therefore v is equal to k4 m by m equation can be rearranged as m is equal to k4 m by m or k4 d d is the density of the gas and directly proportional to the molar mass so this law that follows boyle's law charles law navogadro law it's called an ideal gas so remember this part is extremely important okay now what is an ideal gas equation so the three laws combined in one single formula we call it as ideal gas equation so according to boyle's law we said that v is proportional to or inversely proportional to p or v is proportional to 1 by p charles law v is directly proportional to t avogadro's law v is proportional to n so we combine these three equations and what we get is known as the ideal gas equation so v is proportional to nt by p and v is proportional to uh, r nt we can even write v is equal to r nt by p r is called a proportionality constant so we get pv cross multiplying is equal to nrt or r is equal to pv by nt where r is called the gas constant and also it's known as a universal gas constant hope you understood this clearly okay now at stp if the value of r is remember this can be asked as mcqs 8.314 k per mole and this equation is called the equation of state so we already know that p1 v1 by t1 is equal to nr p2 v2 by t2 is also nr so therefore we get we can equate these two because the right side being equal we can equate the left side p1 v1 by t1 is equal to p2 v2 by t2 we call this combined gas law so it contains five variables so it's also known as special equation of quartz lessons okay so with that uh, we come to the end of the first part of this uh, unit states of matter so as i always say please do like share and subscribe to my channel share with your friends and don't forget to press the bell icon so that as soon as i post new videos you will get the notifications immediately and thanks for watching the video with that we'll come to the end of this session and i'll be uploading the next session for you quite soon thank you